I am the first girl ever to get a Christian BBL. A lot of people have been asking me what a Christian BBL is. As much as I love having a Christian audience or whatever, I don't want the judgmental ones who speak to me out the side of their neck as if they're perfect or holier than everybody else. I want the girls and guys that are humble and know that a walk with God is not spotless. I'm not a religious person. I'm actually agnostic. I grew up in a religious household, extremely religious household. With that being said, this is why I don't take religious people seriously. And not only fake Christians like her, but so many people, it's people watching this video right now leaving comments. Here's why I have a problem with all y'all. <laughs> because how many people who actually are Christian, who represent Jesus the right way, how many of y'all are really holding people like her accountable? And that's these fake Christians. These people that don't do anything Christian-like or religious-like whatsoever. I think the majority of, of people in America who claim to be Christian don't even practice any type of Christianity. The most religious thing that they actually do is say that they're religious. That's it. <laughs> Hey everyone, this is Rob from StageAndSky.com and we need to change something in 2024. This is going to be the first of four videos where I'm going to break down this stigma that we as Christians have, a lot of us have, about being called judgmental. Like we're really quick to say, no judge, I'm not going to, I'm not going to judge you, but you call yourself a Christian. Why are you afraid of that? Why are you afraid of, oh, I'm not, I don't want to shame you. Why are you so afraid of that? I'm going to break down why you might have that fear. I'm going to break down the shaming language that other people have, and especially Christians. A lot of Christians use this shaming language to basically say, hey, keep that to yourself. Meanwhile, if you ask them, hey, okay, you're going to judge me by calling me judgmental. How often do you call the people call out the people who are actually sinning? How often do you call out the people who are actually in indulging in worldly behavior? They're quick to silence you for being a Christian and being so holier than thou and self-righteous, but those same people will say nothing as they watch people hook up or cheat on their spouses or get drunk, they'll party in, engage in sexual immorality. They say nothing about them. I don't want to judge you. It's not my place to judge you. I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just skipping ahead. It is your place. There are multiple scriptures that tell you you need to do this, and it is your duty to do this. If you call yourself a follower of Christ, a Christian, it is your duty. If you say that Christ is king, he is like, if, I mean, just use your imagination here. Think Game of Thrones, all my Game of Thrones friends, fans. Look at the king. If Jesus Christ is your king and he says, do this, what kind of person would you be if you if you just ignore that, if you just disobey? What kind of person would you be if you see others disobeying it and you say nothing, you're like, nope, it's not my business, not my place. Because if you remember Christ's commandment, the first commandment is to love your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. The second commandment is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you see your neighbor, your friends, your family, complete like just indulging in wicked behavior and you say nothing are you really loving them because they're leading they're living a life that leads to destruction but you're not going to say anything you're so concerned about oh i'm with you guys i don't judge it shows again this is the first of four videos and i'm really going to attack here because when i hear the agnostics and people and like atheists get mad at christians and they have good arguments how many people who actually are christian who represent jesus the right way how many of y'all are really holding people like her accountable before i attack the atheists and, and agnostics i think it is imp i think it's important for us to get our house in order it's sort of like um for us as a black community of black people right we want to say oh look at all this police, this police brutality and we're being stere stereotyped and profiled you know and that's wrong we were so focused on that. Meanwhile, the number one killer of black men is black men. I'm calling out Christians, and I'm not talking about all Christians. There are those who live by Christ standards. So if I'm not talking about you, why are you offended? Those who are quick to call Christians judgmental, they think they're doing this awesome service by putting the self-righteous ones in their place. But where should their focus be? The self-righteous may be overzealous and overbearing and annoying. Even as a Christian myself, first off, I don't live like a monk very often because people say, oh, you live by Bible standards. That means, oh, you don't. Listen, everything in moderation. There are a lot of things you can do and enjoy life without indulging in, like I have the scripture up right here, you know, all of these sinful behaviors, these, these sinful lifestyles. You can live a, a fruitful, meaningful, and fun life. And so I, I get that there are Christians who are very overbearing. There, there are Christians who will straight up tell you, hey, if you don't do this this way, then you're going straight to hell. You know, those there are those Christians. They could be annoying. I'm not saying that they don't exist. I'm saying, assuming they practice what they preach and walk the walk and talk the talk, they're saved. So all of our effort to silence them and shut them up is doing nothing. They're already saved. They're in the lifeboats. Now ask yourself, other Christians who are so quick to tell you, hey, don't judge. How many of those same Christians are quick to call out the Christians who are clearly indulging in immoral lifestyles and sinful behavior? They rather silence you, but say nothing about the ones engaged in a hookup culture, doing drugs, getting drunk, attending events that celebrate things like pride. Don't you find that a bit odd? People, a lot of Christians, so badly want to be loved and accepted by humans, this world, that in the spiritual battle, 
where <laughs> I was just reading about the Battle of Sekigahara in Japan, where there's one force over here, and then you have this force over here. A lot of forces that call themselves Christians, when it comes to the battle of the world versus Christians, these Christians will cross lines to, to attack their own. You know, just to prove to these world, hey, I'm one of you guys, right? Don't judge. Hey, Christians, don't judge. It's, it's, it's disloyal. You're demonstrating where your loyalty is, and it's not with God. Here, people like to throw out Jesus Christ because he ate with sinners. And that's when he just converted Matthew and told Matthew to follow him, the tax collector. And then they ate with sinners. And then people say, oh, see, see, even Jesus Christ ate with sinners. So Jesus Christ accepted everyone. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 10 through 17, Jesus uses the illustration of a physician or a doctor seeking out the sick. He says that the healthy ones don't need the doctor. The doctor doesn't seek out healthy ones. He seeks out those who are sick to help them get better. They, they conveniently leave that part out because very often when they say, oh, see, Jesus Christ ate with sinners, they leave out the part that he's doing that to help them repent. He's doing that, being holier than thou, to get them to change their ways. Is that what you're doing? Well, Rock, we're all sinners. Sure, sure. But you know what I'm talking about, all right? Everyone who likes to say we're all sinners, that's another shaming tactic to shut you up because, hey, you're in the same boat as me. No, we're not. We are different levels to this, and some of us need more help than others. They're sinning as in, oh, I made a mistake, and I'm going to do better. I'm not going to try and make that mistake. It was by accident, or I feel really ashamed. David, David is a perfect example. King David is the perfect example of that. You know, he sinned when he put Uriah to the forefront and got him killed after trying to commit paternity fraud by having sex with Bathsheba and getting her pregnant. You know, but he didn't say, oh, you know, I'm living my best life. I do whatever I want. He showed contrition. He was remorseful. All right. Then they're sinning as in, oh, I'm indulging my sinful lifestyle. I'm going to live that life. All right. People not only embrace their sinful actions, they celebrate it. They continue to indulge in it and they see nothing wrong with it. That's the worst part of it. They see nothing wrong with it. In my second video, I'm going to explain why Christians hate being judged. And part of it is because they don't want to see what's wrong with it. They don't want to know. They don't want to find out the truth. I'm going to explain that. I'm going to expose that. Well, maybe the reason why people don't like hanging around Christians like you is because they want to go somewhere where they feel accepted. It doesn't feel good to be with someone who acts like they don't accept you, as if they don't measure up to some standard that you think they should live by. That's why these Christians don't like the ones who act like they're holy and endowed. Good points. Good points. Let's talk about it. How equality and acceptance created your ego. I'd argue that equality and acceptance, the way we think of it now, that is a new phenomenon that really, I mean, took flight, I was saying 2008, 2009, when I saw Lady Gaga and Beyonce really just take the forefront. We saw Glee, we saw Big Bang Theory, we saw programs like Orange is the New Black, and the media and the entertainment industry just basically went full throttle when it comes to sexual immorality, homosexuality, and all of that, okay? And acceptance. Oh, you're, you're good the way you are. It's cool to be different. No, the flip is not. As someone who really is different and someone who really is alone, I can tell you there's nothing awesome about it. Everyone wants to be around someone. It's a human condition. It's not weakness. It's just you're human. You know, you want to be loved. You want to be cherished. You want companionship. That, that's why God sad to say, ladies he created women to be a helper for men. He saw that man was alone and he said, that's not good. I, want, I will create a helper for men. And that's why he created women. That's not the only reason why you were created, but that is a reason, all right? First off, I need you to be aware of how much this world has indoctrinated my generation to believe and prioritize two things, acceptance and equality. By acceptance, we're talking about this need to be welcome and love for who you are and what you do, no matter what you are and who you do. No matter who you are and what you do. I'm not saying that people have never wanted to be accepted. I'm saying it's relatively new that people feel entitled to it because that infringes on someone else's personal constitution, their freedom to choose whether or not they like you or not. By equality, we're not talking about fairness and justice. We're talking about the same. As I wrote in my Simone Biles essay, people are obsessed with this notion that we're all the same and equals, and the truth is we're not. Simone Biles is a gold medalist. That means she was judged against every gymnast that she went up against, and they judged her to be better than all of them. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, she was not equal to, come on, so silly. She was not equal to everyone that she went up against. She's judged to be better. That's why she got gold medals. Even modern Christians, modern Christians. I've seen this on Instagram. I've been following a lot more Instagram, Christian Instagram pages. And a lot of people in the comment section, they like to prioritize this notion of equal, especially when it comes to the roles of men and women and husbands and wives. For those who don't know, if this is the first time you're hearing it, wives are to submit to their husband's authority. The men are supposed to be in charge. And a lot of that people, a lot of people want to inject equality, equal in there. And it's like, why? Why are you, why, why is that so important to you? They hate the idea of being inferior, and they've been led to believe that being a follower or submissive is the inferior role. And I, it's just, again, 
humble heart, man, because even in the Bible, wives are to submit to husbands, but husbands submit to Christ. As myself, there were a lot of things I wanted. The way I lived my life in my 20s is completely different from now. When I was 28, that's when I read the entire Bible from cover to cover. And it took a long time for me to let go of my worldly ambitions and submit to Christ. That's what it means, you know? Like I am inferior to Christ. I am a follower of Christ. I'm not I'm not a king. I'm not a black I'm not a black king. I'm not a black I'm not looking for a black queen. We I'm servant. You know, I am Christ is my Lord. I am a soldier with my sword and my shield ready to do battle for him in the spiritual war. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 24 through 26, Jesus Christ tells you that you can't serve two masters, all right? You cannot serve God and the world. You will either hate the one and love the other. The world teaches quality and acceptance. The Bible, believe it or not, discriminates. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible does discriminate. And it tells us that the kingdom of heaven will not have certain behaviors and lifestyles. That means these behaviors you see on screen, it's discriminating against all of that. There's no place for it in the kingdom of heaven. And that's what I think people get wrong. People think that welcoming, because Christ does welcome us all, but it doesn't mean that he's going to accept you as you are. You have to repent. There is conditions to salvation. And a lot of people, they're not comfortable with it. I'm going to talk about it in my next video. And here's where the world has tricked you. Here's where your own principles fail you. Let's say you stand on the grounds of tolerance and acceptance. I know this is hypocritical because I've actually experienced this. Let's say that you stand by your beliefs that everyone should do, should be whoever they are and still be loved and accepted no matter what. Do you have that same energy when you come up against a racist or misogynist or those who tend to vote particular party? Trump. Oh, you're a MAGA? Or could it be that you pick and choose which lifestyles you accept based on how you feel? And when you have an entire generation doing this, it leaves them vulnerable to an influence of popular opinion. You left yourself wide open to the worship of human beings other than God. I think the reason why so many are comfortable worshiping humans and God is because plainly put, they love their sin. The world is telling you what you want to hear. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 3 explains it right here. I have it up on the screen. If you've been influenced to prioritize money, sex, fame, and fun, while the Bible preaches modesty, celibacy, and repentance, it makes sense why Jesus said that you'll love one master and hate the other i.e. you hate the Christians who are holier than thou and living by Bible standards and you love the Christians who are bending on the rules and do whatever they want. I want the girls and guys that are humble and know that a walk with God is not spotless. My friends, I don't tell you all this to be doom and gloom. That's not the point of this. I just hate that you're being lied to. All right, my anger and the vitriol by which I write these essays, because anyone can read these essays that I put up on stage on sky.com. I'm like, man, Rock sounds really bitter. He sounds like there's a lot of anger in his, in his voice and his tone and in his words. Ask yourself, when you read the book of Jeremiah, does he sound happy? Because Jerusalem is being under siege by Nebuchadnezzar in the kingdom of Babylon. His words aren't happy. Jesus Christ, when he went to the temple and flipped over the, the, the tax collectors and people who were robbing the people, did he sound happy? When he said to Peter, because Peter's like, oh, you're going to go to Jerusalem and die? No, don't do that. He said, get behind me, Satan. He called him a name, right? So there are, there are times when we as Christians need to put our foot down and be a little bit more harsher than we should be, all right? It does say, okay, the Bible says, speak with love. And I do think that the Bible, the gospel should be pre preached with love. But I think you also need to address your audience. The audience I'm talking to are the hard-headed ones who think that, oh, you can do whatever you want. I can't do that with lovey-dovey words, trying to make them feel good because they get so enamored with oh okay i'm good the way i am my friends i don't tell you all this for the doom and gloom i just hate that you're being lied to as christians it is our duty to reach out and pull you into the lifeboats of salvation i personally know woman this is a personal story so it's like oh you're just saying to tell you you know i've lived this experience okay 2011 i knew a woman who when i first met her she was a woman you could tell she was beautiful i thought she was cute right but you could tell she might have some lesbian she was more not masculine the way you think of aggressive masculine but she's certainly tomboyish that was the way we used to describe it as the years went by and LGBTQ started to gain steam, you know, she was emboldened by the preachings of the world to cast off the person that God made her out to be. And I saw, I witnessed as everyone around her encouraged her and prodded her on. You know, I saw as a company and corporations emboldened her, waving a 50 foot flag, pride flag from one of the walkways. I used to hate it. But, oh, don't shove your beliefs down my, my throat. That's what they say about Christians. But what do you see here when you go to a building that you work in and you see a big, 50 foot rainbow flag this is a true story they would wave on it's like you got no choice you have to see it it's in your face in 2016 i ran into her in the hallway and it's been a long time since we talked one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one, and we used to talk one-on-one -on -one all the time i even helped her move from one place to another and it's been a while so she asked me hey rock how you been and by 2016 i was 30 years old and i had read the entire bible i told her well i've changed i read the entire bible from cover to cover and i believe it i started to put god first and i committed my life as a christian it was honestly awkward. I didn't say this with a hottie, I'm better than you now. It was awkward. I know her lifestyle. I knew she was a lesbian. So 
it brought me no pleasure to proclaim allegiance that opposed hers. So I, I get it, ladies and gentlemen. I get, oh, I don't want to hurt your feelings. But again, when you really call Christ your king, when you really pledge your allegiance and commit yourself to a belief, even if it is awkward and it is difficult, I mean, th those are the moments of faith where you demonstrate, are you really Christian? Do you really believe? I cared about this woman. I didn't want to offend her. I didn't want to make her sad. So I understand Christians who are afraid to come off as judgmental. I didn't want her walking away thinking that I didn't love her as a person. I do. You know, I, I know that a lot of parents out there who are Christians, they have gay sons and daughters, you know, and they invite them to their weddings. And that's a tough decision. A lot of people will get, oh, really? You don't want to come to your son's or daughter's marriage? I'm like, that is a tough decision. Right? We're supposed to put God first, not our sons, not our family members. So again, I didn't want her walking away thinking that I didn't love her as a person. I did. And it was out of love that I told her the truth. You know, while everyone else is saying, oh, girl, do you? I told her the truth. And she responded with, well, I'm Christian too. So, you know, that's great. That's what she told me. And I didn't tell her, no, you're not really Christian. I don't like to say that about anyone. Even the Christians that I'm criticizing in this video, I'm not telling you that you're not a Christian because you don't believe the way I believe or you're not where I'm at in my Christianity. I told her and I would say to you, oh, that's great. You must be on your Christian journey. You still have some way to go. I don't, I didn't tell her that, but I'm telling you this, you know, that that is the thought that I think to myself. So I don't dismiss you and say that you're not who you claim to be, but clearly you got some things you need to work on. Homosexuality is an abomination. That's what God tells us. So if you claim to, you know, put God and love him with your whole heart and soul, I mean, this is what God tells us. Well, you know what, Rock? We all got some ways to go. You know, no one's perfect. Stop, 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 stop right there, all right? This is what I'm talking about. This need to feel that we're all the same, we're all on the same level, and we all got the same problems. We are different, all right? And some people need more help than others. If you Take two kids, all right? Say you're a parent, you have two children, one of them has bees and the other is just straight up failing. Who are you gonna pour more attention into? Yeah, you'll say to the one who has bees, okay, I need you to do better, all right? You can give those days, I, I believe me, all right? I know you got it in you, you got it in you. But to the one who's failing, all right, clear my schedule we're gonna sit down we're gonna go over this you pour more attention to the one who's failing all right so this whole notion of we're all the same and we all got some ways to go yes there is no perfection i get it however those who are clearly struggling clearly struggling they need more help so miss me with all of this stupid notion of equality and i say that with strong language because you know it's dumb you know it's dumb all right if you got two people climbing a mountain and the goals reach the top and you have people already up there like a few feet from the top and there's there are people at the bottom who are still struggling who are you going to give more attention to who are you going to focus on the christian lesbian who i'm talking about ever since that conversation in the hallway back in 2016 she went on to marry her girlfriend she invited half the department and she didn't invite me despite me knowing me the longest and in the last three years the last is 2024 in the last three years I mean, it was just by chance, about a couple of weeks ago, a friend told me that she, he ran into her and sure enough, this girl removed her breast. She now has a beard and has a mustache and she looks like a man. And you know, like, so, I mean, th the point of this is when you keep your judgment to yourself, and again, I'm going to explain there's different types of judgment. You do enable them. They get worse. The guy said at the beginning of the video, how many people who actually are Christian who represent Jesus the right way, how many of y'all are really holding people like her accountable? There's no accountability, you know, so they're going to continue to get worse. The woman who got her BBL, I don't care about the BBL, honestly, you know, like for her to post a video, oh, I got a Christian BBL. I wouldn't have said anything about the video if not for the shaming language that she used. I don't want the judgmental ones who speak to me out the side of their neck as if they're perfect or holier than everybody else. Oh, I don't want the Christians who are judgmental. I want the humble ones. You're not humble, sweetheart. You're not. Well, Rock, it's her decision to lo to take off her breasts and to, to get the beard and mustache to look like a man. That's her decision. Okay. But am I not allowed to feel sad or disappointed? Look at all the parents who have, you know, who grew up in a church, who believe in Christ, and their children turn out as homosexuals and they get married, you know, to the same sex. You know, are they not allowed to feel disappointment? To feel entitled to acceptance is to say, forget what you think, you must do what we want. Am I not allowed to feel sad or disappointment? See, it's that right there. That's why we hate you Christians who think you're holy enough because you refuse to accept that it's her decision. She refused to enough, all right? We all want what's best for our friends and family. We all want our friends and family and our loved ones to prosper. And again, while you're so quick to chastise me and for my very reasonable and biblical disappointment, do you have any words for her? Or is it just, you go girl, live your best life? And again, I get it. 
It's not great to hurt people's feelings. It feels good to be loved and accepted. You're reading the words of someone who's almost always alone, all right? I cherish every single moment when I'm with the people who do love and accept me because it doesn't happen every day, all right? The last thing I wanna do is say, say something to push one of them away. But if I have to, I will you know because god comes first and again that's i think why a lot of people especially a lot of uh, young liberal ladies don't like christian conservative men like me because we're not going to put you first we're going to put god first and they don't like that a lot of these ladies want to be worshipped and be seen as a priority and it's like no godly men put god first all right if i had reacted with wow friend that's so cool you're a lesbian and about to get married i probably would have been invited to a wedding cavorting with friends and co-workers and have a good time as normal people do but i didn't i remember last year um standing it was a family function where a lot of my cousins had gotten together and family like one who was super close to me heard one of our cousins was bisexual and the cousin when she heard this said oh that's cool now in that moment for all you guys oh you, you can't have rock around he's just gonna call out everything there's a lot of stuff that i see i don't say anything about there's a word called discretion all right we use wisdom there's a time and place for everything all right when i heard my beloved cousin tell another cousin oh you're bisexual that's cool i thought to myself no that's not cool all right i'm pretty sure she didn't think it was cool either but in the heat of the moment and this is a problem we're so conditioned to want to make other people feel good Again, oh, acceptance, that we end up enabling them. And because I'm not that way, you look at me like I'm holier than thou. Another example, this is a true example, <laughs> and it is so funny. One of, my, one of my bosses, I love him to death, he's been like, a, he, I love him to death. Uh, he was talking to me about Kevin Samuels, and I told him, you know, Kevin Samuels is dead. What? Kevin Samuels, because he, apparently he's on Instagram, he's been getting all these clips, so he, think, he thought that Kevin Samuels was still alive, and he said, oh, how'd he die? I'm like, well, he's having sex with a woman, and he has some kind of heart attack. And he looked at the picture of the woman that he was having sex with, and he, looked, he showed it to me. He's like, dang, see? Kevin Samuels did good. And I told him right there, I didn't, you know, I'm not trying to be holier than now, but I had to tell him, because you brought up the subject. And I said, yeah, but he shouldn't have been doing that. You know, he wasn't married. This is sexual immorality. And then my boss said, so? Oh wait, yeah, you're right, because he's Christian too. Very often, sometimes we as Christians need to hold each other accountable, you know? Like, even when it comes to those moments for a locker room talk, and I do love locker room talk, I love the barbershop talk, I will rip and tell jokes with the best of them. I can, you know, your mama jokes all day, but when it comes to stuff like this, morality, real life stuff, you, we need to hold our ground, all right? I brought up the example to illustrate that I'm not just talking crap, I'm not criticizing others while failing to live up the standard myself, it isn't easy, all right? Satan's made it extremely difficult as as demonstrated in the last couple of years where you can't even call out, hey, you shouldn't be doing that because you'll be called judgmental. And because our society, our modern wicked culture has deemed it to think that, oh, you shouldn't be judgmental, everyone's afraid to do it. Which means that sinners keep sinning and those who are, you know, should be speaking up, they're afraid to now. This is a satanic tactic. I'm putting it into it. I'm not afraid anymore. It's no longer cute. I'm, oh, Rock, you know what your problem is? You're judgmental. Yeah, and uh, explain to me why you think it is because I'm probably going to break some holes into your argument. And I say that with love because it needs to end. It's on us. If you call yourself a Christian, you wear that on your badge, it's on us, all right? Stay tuned to the next part. I'm gonna talk about, oh, should the church be more accepting? And I'm gonna expose the truth as to why people are afraid of the truth, all right?